Hello all, and welcome to tonight's beer review, which I was totally not expecting to be doing tonight. It's a Thursday night, I've dropped my mother off at the airport, and um, yeah. So, we're going to be reviewing something that I reviewed 2016, and uh, it's one that if you are into beers, you've probably already heard of before. This was once uh, considered a must-have, a legendary bill or beer, one that was actually difficult to find at times, which is why it took me a while to get around to reviewing it. So I first reviewed the grapefruit iteration of this beer, which, honestly, I found really, really good. Better than, you know, the OG here. Now, Ballast Point is a craft brewer that is from San Diego that's been bought out by Heineken. And there's been a whole bunch of other drama too. And so their, their stock, as I, as I suppose to say, their stock amongst craft beer brewers has dropped ever since the buyout. And I haven't seen them honestly being distributed in Hawaii for quite some time. But I saw this at the supermarket of all places. It wasn't there last week. And um, it was up there with the other stovepipe cans, and there was only, like, two left. So, obviously, I was going to grab one of them. And it wasn't a cheap... This is, like, four... It wasn't a cheap beer. This was, like, four fifty for this stovepipe here. But still, I, I kind of want to revisit it, it revisit it, um, even because I haven't had it since 2016. And a lot of people go and say that it's changed quite a bit in that time. Now, has it really? I'm of the theory that it's more likely sour grapes, that since they got bought out by a large macro brewer slash multinational conglomerate, that people are a little bit salty that they've lost that. You know, that's no longer their thing. It's something that's ostensibly well distributed, is, even though I can't find it in Hawaii anymore. I know that they've expanded their distribution. And I know they've been struggling. These are like one of these brewers that were struggling for quite some time. Um, being in that nebulous twilight zone of not really a small local brewery anymore, but not really being nationally distributed either. Now, honestly, I'm not going to be able to go and tell you if it's changed all that much as a beer since 2016, because I can't go back in time, you know. And yes, while I have that review from 2016, my palate has changed over time. My palate changes from day to day. And I think anyone who is honest about reviewing beverages or anything, beverages or anything else that relies on a sense of smell knows you have up days, down days, and things can change variously. You know, that doesn't mean that it's all arbitrary, but it's just something that exists. You know, it's not, it's not a, it's not a finely calibrated thing that you can empirically rely on and, you know, in a completely systematic manner. It, it, it's impressionistic. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. This is 7.0 ABV. I'm not sure what the um, IBUs on this are. But uh, let's just get to this. And I'm going to get loopy pretty quick because I have a really empty stomach right now. I haven't eaten much all day, actually. Hate this stupid camera. It's like, why, do you, why would you make a webcam that can go that close anyway? Huh. So I popped it open, and that's not a good sign, and it already had this foaming up. It's been sitting in the refrigerator for about an hour already. This isn't old. Um, I believe the canning here is, uh, yeah, I should check that out first. And I'm spilling beer on myself here. Wonderful. I'm going to smell wonderful tomorrow. Um, it's either... Well, let's go and pour this out first so we can... Yeah. So I can get a better look at it. Ok. 
Okay. About a couple fingers worth of thick, fluffy off-white head. Off-white, almost to beige. And, um... Lighting's not great right now. A sort of... Amber-orange color. Completely clear, no haze. And I can see maybe this bottom a little bit better without spilling on myself now. Should check that out first. God, I, uh, I think my bulb's trimmed out here. Let me go and see here. Oh, look. My lantern's dead too now. Wonderful. Where's my cell phone? Use that. I can illuminate the bottom there. Okay, let me go and see what this dating is. Package 03-23-23. Okay, so really fresh actually. Got pine notes. Bready to biscuity malts. Citrus zest, almost slight note of slight hint of caramel. Not too much fruit. Um, definitely old school California style OG, you know. Um, IPA. It's not one of the hazy, fruity ones. This is definitely going to be bitter. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I haven't smelt like um, a really OG IPA in a while. You know, West Coast style IPA. I'm saying OG a lot in this review. I don't know why. Okay, on to the palette. Yeah, that's bitter, all right. <laughs> kind of goes to show you I haven't had like a true IPA in a while. So, very bitter up front. Pine resiny. Kind of recedes in the mids. And you just get a slightly sweet note there that kind of pokes his head up again. And a long-lasting bitter finish that remains on the palate for quite some time. There's a slightly fruity citrus and um, caramel malt top note. I do remember this being a bit more complex the first time I had it around. I mean, there's nothing bad there. Um, I just remember a lot more flavor notes. And look, since it wants to be blurry, you can go and look at this beautiful sculpin. Despite it not being as complex as I remembered, it's well balanced, you know. You have that big hit of hops up front, but it never quite goes into being overly tannic. And the malt is, you know, there's still taste notes of the malt there, you know. Obviously, completely hop forward, but the malts aren't an afterthought, you know what I mean? It's it's not completely blown out. You got you still got um, 
that sort of bready quality and slight sweetness that pokes his head up in the mids there before that long lasting uh, pine resin finish sits in on the tongue. course right now starting to get a little bit of that uh, congestion I sometimes get from hops among other things I get a runny nose uh, from various food items and sometimes it just seems completely random I'll eat a burger be fine sometimes I'll eat a burger my nose will run like a faucet go figure you know, and it'll be from like the same, it'll be like the same Wendy's burger, only eaten at different times. I like Wendy's. <laughs> you know, as it's warming up, it's kind of expressing itself a little better. You know, a bit more orange is poking at poking its way through in the mids. And some slight floral notes also appearing in the top note. So I think I kind of sussed that out. I mean, I could wait for it to get a little bit more warmer, but I think, you know, it's safe to say that this is a classic West Coast style IPA, a very good example of it. Is it the example of it? I, I, I don't know. Your mileage may vary, but it's definitely quality, especially when it's fresh like this one is. Excuse me. Also, too, it's still got that lovely can art. As for who owns it now, well, I don't really care. I care about, you know, the beer itself, whether it's brewed by a gigantic company or by a single guy in the basement. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's it's the final product that matters. Yeah, it's definitely broadening up quite a bit as it warms up, just the same time as I'm starting to get congested to the point where I'm going to start losing sensibility of it. So, yeah. I think this is definitely one of those beers you have to visit. Um, well, if you're into IPAs, I mean, if, if you're not into IPAs, especially West Coast style IPAs, um, you're not going to enjoy this. But if IPAs are something that you enjoy, then this is definitely one of the ones that you have to visit in that journey of tasting beers. So, Ballast Point Sculpin India Pale Ale. A classic, slightly tarnished in reputation, but still a solid product. And that, folks, is your beer review for this evening. Cheers.